The Denver Nuggets thievery has struck again as the franchise's annual pattern of pulling draft steals one after the next has continued in a massive way. Not only did Denver rob Julian Strother with pick number 29, but they may have added another all-time great second-round pick next to Jokic by snagging the all-ACC five-year product of Clemson, Hunter Tyson. In addition to breaking down how Tyson made the all-summer league first team, You'll not only see a comparison of both he and their newest phenom out of Gonzaga, but you'll hear a Nikola Jokic fact you won't believe, and we'll jump into the film room to look at one of Denver's go-to plays. Stay tuned for all that and more. Right quick, just 16% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe, leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds, it makes a massive difference, and for a follow back, follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Any support is greatly appreciated. Back to the content. 38th overall pick in 2023's draft, Hunter Tyson, posted over 20 points per game in the 2K24 Summer League. Tyson attempted an average of over 7 threes each outing and made a mind-bogglingly exact 50% of them. Proving what happened in that short five-game span in Las Vegas was no fluke. Over 34 outings last season for the Tigers, the 6'8", 215-pound killer from Clemson took six triples on average during his senior campaign and made a stellar 40.5% of them. Tyson used the extra year of NCAA eligibility granted to college athletes who played in the 2020 season due to the pandemic in order to play a fifth season at Clemson. That didn't help his draft stock. Entering the draft at age 23 when most GMs are looking for young 19-year-old prospects was a primary reason he fell into the second round. The two front-running weaknesses that NBA Draft.net gave to him were that he wasn't much of a shot creator and that he was one of the oldest players in the draft. They also gave him a far from flashy comparison of Brian Cardinal. The weaknesses of Tyson's pre-draft scouting report also stated, will struggle to separate and get open looks for himself off the dribble, doesn't project to be much more than a shooter on the wing. Below average athlete who gets beat off the dribble often and rarely contests shots inside the arc. What do you think my biggest weakness is? Correction, was my biggest weakness is. You're not smart. And you could tell that analysis was far off based on what Hunter displayed in the summer. I don't know how someone came up with that he wasn't much of a shot creator, as here he takes it off the bounce for a baseline throwdown. Catching the post entry, he faces up, jabs, sweeps through, tweens, hezzies, and steps back for a contested fader. He's great at faking on the catch and getting leverage for attacks as he goes with simply a slight drive entry and step back to hit another fader, next drawing gravity for a line drive attack and finishing over a bigger five man. So much for him not being able to separate for looks off the bounce as here he transitions to the post, shimmies with an elusive jab step, and fades away in the opposite direction over two defenders. After gathering it on the move and transition, he starts a momentum crossover before stopping on a dime at 100 miles per hour to let fly of this deep range bomb off the dribble. Again, working off the bounce, this time in the half, like the big man version of Steph Curry, he uses the screen and pulls up from distance from the right wing. Hunting down the interior, watch the elusiveness from Hunter to immediately drive into his jab step on the catch, get downhill in a blur, before bodying off his matchup for the tough floater. This time, he pitches a dribble handoff, relocates to the right wing where he instantly receives the swing, and after pass faking to the corner and stepping back, Tyson still finds the balance to knock down this three ball. Again creating off the bounce, he gets bodied in the corner, nearly goes out of bounds, but navigates the baseline and hangs in the air to find the trailing cutter for a dime dropping. Versatility defined on this play as he initially picks and pops, then gets the swing and receives a screen for himself working off the bounce and gets a four point play opportunity. Defensively taking this swift rotation out of drop coverage as he closes out with precision by keeping his feet moving, shuffling back for the monster swat at the buzzer. He's going to fly out for another solid closeout, clamping up the penetration to force the kickout, before reading the offense by sticking around as the low man to bother another drive, which forces the TO. Considering his polished offensive skill set very much consists of shot creating chops, along with elite floor spacing stretch big potential, combined with his shown off awareness defensively, it's pretty shocking that Tyson fell to Denver in round two. The first comparison that comes to mind with Tyson is Laurie Markinen, in my opinion, with his athleticism and shooting at the four spot. I did cover the 29th overall selection Julian Strother in this video right here, but I've yet to mention that a few spots behind Tyson, Julian was fourth among all rookies 
rookies in summer league scoring, posting an 18.2 point per game average. As I have noted before, there's a lot of Jamal Murray in Strother's game, but I'd compare his peak upside to Brandon Roy, as the 6'7 sharpshooting slasher in Julian can both let it fly from distance and get into the heart of the defense with quick twitch drives at a level that could have easily made him a top 15 pick in 2023's draft. For more on Julian, go watch the video, which I'll again put on your screen. Hunter and Julian add to a long line of Nugget draft steals. In 2014, they stole two-time MVP and Finals MVP Nikola Jokic with the 41st overall pick during a Taco Bell commercial. In 2016, Dragon Bender and Chris Dunn, two players out of the league, in addition to Buddy Heald, were taken directly ahead of Jamal Murray. In 2018, 13 teams passed on Michael Porter Jr. before he landed with Denver at 14. In 2022, Finals hero and legit championship rotation piece Christian Brown was stolen with the 21st overall pick. However, it'll be a long winding road for Tyson and Strother to establish themselves as key contributors, let alone get in the rotation in the first place. With the likes of two superstars in Jokic and Murray who are surrounded by a veteran core of talent who just want to chip, they'll have to fight for every minute they get. Jamal Murray is about to get ready for a run with a stacked Team Canada at the FIBA World Cup. Blue Arrow's most definitively iconic moment of the year was being the comeback athlete of the year at the ESPYs. After tearing his ACL and missing all of the 21 playoffs, plus all of the 21-22 season in playoffs, Murray recovered to be the NBA champion's most prevalent perimeter creator. Jamal would gracefully accept his SB with this humble speech. Um, first off, uh, I want to thank God, the man above, for giving me the strength to endure the long journey back. Um, I want to thank my family, my friends, my coaches, the whole Denver Nuggets organization, all the fans for having belief in me from the start. But I want to give a big shout out to my teammates for helping me get my confidence back. Um, KCP, one of them right there, my brother. Um, and obviously without the team success, you know, this is not even possible. Murray's most memorable plays and most impressive averages will be broken down in an upcoming Nuggets video, but I had to make time for this insane fact about Jamal's superstar running mate, Nikola Jokic. Despite hearing endless fat boy jokes, Joker has time and time again displayed himself to be one of basketball's most well-conditioned athletes. Albeit in a game where Denver took the L, back in Game 3 of the 2019 Western Conference Semifinals against the Blazers, an outing that went to quadruple overtime, the kid from Sombor posted a 33-point, 18-rebound, 14-assist triple-double. More notably, Nikola withstood the test of a bewildering 65 minutes played, still finding a way to stay efficient. In over an hour between the lines, playing time nearing a threshold of 70 minutes, the two-time MVP made 13 of his 25 shots from the field and four of his seven shots from distance. Those of you claiming Jokic's stamina isn't elite don't know ball. It's how prepared Jokic is both mentally and physically in addition to the shape that guys like Murray, Porter, Gordon, KCP, etc. are in that allows them to execute a complex, therefore unstoppable offensive playbook led by a top-notch coaching staff. This ram elbow cross action became one of Malone's go-to plays in the regular season. First, Jokic sets a cross screen for Brown, then flies to the opposite elbow to set a ram screen for Porter. After that, while a traditional ram would entail the man getting screened for, in this case Porter, going to set the on-ball for Murray, Denver's elbow cross action is a bit different. Porter does pop out to be a clear passing lane outlet for Jamal, but it's instead Brown who then sets a back screen for Jokic. However, it then becomes clear Porter has failed to V-cut to the proper position, because this playset entails Porter supposed to be popping out to the far left wing to receive the swing, before sending it into the back screen for Jokic. Since Porter instead cuts to the top right of the arc, if Murray swung it there, there'd be no angle for him to send it into Jokic. Brown's back screen plus IQ and Jokic's stamina after setting two off-ball screens make it happen anyway. To be fair, Markkanen should be trying to front Jokic, but doesn't follow the development of the action so Jokic is able to receive a clean entry. On top of that, Olenek blindly switches the screen despite it being clear that Lori isn't switching. This leaves Brown wide open on the short roll. Brown pump fakes to get both of them jumping and has the wherewithal, hang time, and passing vision to complete a mid-air bullet in traffic to spot the wide open AG in the corner. For more footage breakdown of that elbow cross action in addition to other play sets from teams across the NBA along with Denver and future uploads, leave a thumbs up on this video. 
but with the type of adaptability Denver's offense flows with to adjust itself mid-possession, let alone run the advanced sets they do in the first place, it's no wonder the Minnesota Timberwolves are hanging a banner in their home gym for giving them the toughest challenge. Beating Denver once and giving them a challenge in a couple other games, let alone beating them four times in a seven-game series, is a completed task worth celebrating if you can achieve it. This was D-Flow, help us on the grind to 100k, and I'll see you next video.